How did I just realize that you can ring the bell on the bike? <laughs> I won't be doing this all the time now. What is up everyone, Munching Orange here, and welcome back to Pokemon Sword and Shield. Today we find ourselves back in the bridge field, right by the Pokemon Nursery, because, as you can see in front of me, there is a very special Pokemon, and I want to show you guys how to actually find it. So, as you know, in the wild area, there's many different weathers that could be happening, but here in the bridge field, you can actually find the little elephant Pokemon that we saw since way back in the intro of the game, and I've been searching for one ever since. And it's actually a very low percentage chance of it popping up here in the bridge field, but during the overcast weather, there's a slightly better percentage of it appearing. And I believe weather changes once every 24 hours, but here in the bridge field, when it's overcast, which I guess is a fancy word for cloudy, but as you can see here, there's actually two in this patch of grass. So I would recommend searching for it whenever it is overcast, otherwise it's going to be a lot rarer to find. But thankfully last night, I came back to the bridge field, and it happened to be the right weather, so here is Cuffent. I don't know where the coup part of its name comes from, but obviously the fant comes from elephant. And this is a very cute little elephant here that I've been wanting to catch for a long time. And I've actually got Thor the Pikachu out here because I was looking for Toxels originally, uh, which I managed to find at the end of the last episode. And if you have a Pokemon with static, it can actually help with making electric Pokemon appear. Uh, not necessarily in the overworld though. I think that's only for encounters in the grass, like the ones where you actually have to run into the little shaking patch, but for Cuffant here, or Cute Fant, maybe that's what it comes from, the fact that it's so dang cute, um, it's only found in the overworld, as far as I know, so just make sure that the right weather is in effect, you should find it. Anyway, it's time to try to catch it, and as you can see, I had quite a close call with the HP there. I mean, it's not that big a deal because there's a bunch of them around at the moment, now that we got it at the perfect health, it is time to go for the Dusk Ball because it is nighttime right now. That'll have better chances. And just like that, we've got ourselves the cutest elephant around. I figured a lot of people are going to want to know where to find this little guy known as the Copper Dem Pokemon, a pure steel type. It digs up the ground with its trunk. It's also very strong, being able to carry loads of over 5 tons without any problem at all. Kind of surprising because it's so small. At least in the overall, it looks tiny, and the one that we've got has sheer force with a speed-raising nature. That's interesting. I don't think it's the fastest Pokemon, so... Not sure if I'm gonna use it in this playthrough, but regardless, I wanted to show you guys where to find it because it is a pretty rare Pokemon, and one that, like I said, I've been looking for a long time, and I figured we weren't gonna be able to find it until way later in the game, but... As you can see here, they're really not too rare, as long as the weather allows it. But now it is time to continue our adventure, our journey to Stoanside, and the next gym. I didn't actually expect all that stuff in Hammerlock to take this long, but what the heck is going on here? What a cute Cinecobra. Just look at those adorable eyes. I seem to have completely forgotten the accents that I made up for Team Yell. It's our duty as Team Yell to make sure Cinecobra gets a nice peaceful sleep. Well, it doesn't look like it's sleeping right now. Oh my god, is that bead? Hello there! If I promise not to wake the Pokemon, will you let me through? Of course! It'd be our pleasure! Wait, what about us? Also, what was that on his back? Is that like the horn that he usually blows? Actually, it looks like a giant paperclip. But why? Hey, Orange! You're heading to Stoan's side, right? Oi! Team Yell! Don't suppose you'll let us through! Nah! You kids are way too loud! Can't be letting you through! And we're particularly not fond of kids wearing the challenge band. With all your stomping around, Silly Cobra is sure to wake up. Right. What do you say, Orange? If we don't get past them, we won't be able to continue our gym challenge at Stoan side. Well, let's do it then. Yeah, that's the spirit. Thankfully, we did heal our Pokemon, so we should be good. You two are way too noisy. You don't want to wake up Silly Cobra now, do you? 
I swear, kids these days, well, we've got no choice. We have to send you packing. It's all for the sake of Silly Cobra. Okay, fine. Yell grunts, even though their name is literally has yell in it, they're the ones telling us not to yell in front of the little snake, who is not even asleep, by the way. And apparently we're not even doing a double battle? Well, I see that the harsh sunlight is out right now, which means it's the perfect time to bring out our salsa and hit him with some fiery moves here. And also resist Stunky too. At least I think we resist uh, poison moves, but it actually just went for a move that literally poisons us. I thought that was gonna be an actually damaging move, but apparently not. Uh, so let's go for the flame wheel and hopefully one shot this little Stunky. We do, but apparently it's got Aftermath. I actually did not even know that Stunky had that ability. But then again, you don't really fight Stunkies too often, I feel, so... Yeah, that's, that's probably why. Uh, we are gonna get Linoon, Linoon. I've kind of heard both for that one. I've personally always said Linoon, though. So I don't know why I randomly switched to Linoon now, but... I don't know, I'm rethinking all of my pronunciation now, apparently. Ever since starting to do these team yell accents and other British people in the game. I mean, it's mostly just Team Yell and like Marnie that I actually give the English accent. My horrible, terrible English accent, which probably isn't even from a single region. It's kind of like a weird amalgamation of all of the movies I've heard with British actors in it. Maybe they're not even all British. There might be some Scottish in there, might be a little bit of Welsh and whatever else has that sort of accent. I think I'll leave this to you, Orange. Keep up the pace. Wait, what? Hop, come on, dude, you're supposed to two on two this with me. Oh no, I already knew it, dude. He's depressed because he lost to Bead. How are we gonna cheer this man up? I guess for now, all we can do is take on these uh, yell grunts and hope to inspire him in some way. Come on, Artorius, I believe in you. Use that leaky sword and show Hop what you're made of. The Fury Attack, of course, is gonna hit four times. At least it wasn't five, though. And now that we're a Surfetched, we're definitely doing more damage. I'm glad, though, that we got our uh, leaky little duck to evolve there. He looks awesome, too. I just, I love Surfetched. Ugh, why'd you have to be such a bother? I mean, you are the ones that are blocking our path. I don't get it. There's no self-awareness here. Silly Cobra might wake up after all that ruckus. Then there's no point in us sticking around. Let's get out of here. We'll make these bothersome kids holler some other day. Yeah, that's right. Scamper on out of here. Orange, you and Surfetch were brilliant together. That's right. Just a little inspiration for you, Hop. See, Bead really wiped the floor with me the last time we battled. And don't get me wrong, I can take a loss. Battling means you've got to lose sometimes. But you're taking L after L, Hop. Come on, dude. But he said that I was dragging Lee's good name through the mud, being so rubbish like I was. And I just can't get the words out of my head. Oh gosh, I feel like he's tearing up. If I'm weak, then people will think Lee's weak too. But I don't want that. I can't let Lee get dragged down. He's the unbeatable champion. I'm gonna have to take some time figuring this out. See you around, Orange. Oh, we got like a glimpse of his face for like a second there. And I'm pretty sure he was either in tears or close to it. What is happening with this snake, though? I don't know why I haven't even mentioned it, but obviously that's a new Pokemon there. You're one of the gym challengers endorsed by Leon, aren't you? Wait, who's this? Oh, uh, oh, sorry about the voice I gave you, lady. My name's Opal. If you want to know more, have a look at my league card. How about no? I think I've had a good enough look at your actual face that I don't want to look at the league card anymore. But if you insist, I'll keep an eye on you, child. I want to see what you can do when you go all out. Okay, then. Am I the only one a little creeped out right now? She's slower than that silly cobra, huh? All right. Well, we got two new league cards in hand. I guess we might as well check those out as a little preview of the gym leaders that are to come. Oh, I guess I haven't actually customized my own league card on this save file, so I should definitely go do that because it's looking pretty plain right now. But we got Rayhan and Opal, and actually we also got Bead's card. When did we even get that? Apparently yesterday, but I don't remember at what point in the game. 
Uh, Bede spent some time living in an orphanage after his family ran into some trouble when he was young. He always had difficulty getting along with others and would constantly get into fights. That is, until one day Chairman Rose visited this facility. Rose gave Bede a Pokemon, which changed Bede's life forever. He showed talent as a trainer and threw himself into Pokemon battles, becoming stronger by the day. He has joined the gym challenge with an endorsement from the Chairman himself, and Bede plans to prove that the Chairman's faith was not misplaced. Wow. So he's actually an orphan? I mean, I guess they're not going to tell you that his parents are dead in a Pokemon game, but usually that's what being an orphan means, right? I kind of feel for him now, like, he's still kind of a twat, but it makes sense why he's so mean to trainers that seemingly have it all compared to his tragic family life. But here we've got Opal, the oldest gym leader in the Galar region. She took over for her mother 70 years ago. What? How old is this lady? Oh my god, <laughs> she's kept the position since. However, she feels that her own values have reached their limits, and thus she's currently looking for a worthy successor. She claims that she gives deliberately tricky quizzes because people reveal their true colors when in a pinch, but many speculate that in reality, she does it out of pure spite. Alright, easy prediction, Marnie's gonna end up replacing her by the end of the game. But finally, let's read about Rayhan. Raihan? He's commonly regarded as the most skilled gym leader in the Galar region. He has strive, striven for victory in every environment, and as a result, he has adopted a battle style where he utilizes weather effects to their fullest. It is rumored that he could easily become another region's champion should he choose to move, but it seems that to Rayhan, defeating Leon is much more important. His uploaded selfies are quite popular. Occasionally, he'll post a photo that only shows a sandstorm. This guy right here, Rotom Graham Famous. That's actually so cool how they mentioned that he could be a champion in a different region, and I could see it, man. If he trains Dragon-type Pokemon, and he's a master of weather effects, that's like way better than most Pokemon NPCs in other games. But with all that info in hand, I guess we're ready to head on to Stow on side, but not before making some adjustments to the team. So I've decided to switch up the team a little bit. Let's check it out and see what is going on. Of course, we've got Salsa, Mojo, Charlie, and Artorias staying in the party, but two new additions in Violet and Cardi, who you can see down there. But first off, Violet, the Toxel that we caught at the very end of the last episode, got that rattled ability with a modest nature. And at level 29, I think it's just one level away from evolving. I also went to the move relearner and gave it Belch, which is a 120 power poison type move. I don't know why it learns this so early on, uh, let's out a damaging belch. The user must eat a held berry to use this move. Oh, that's probably why. <laughs> I was like, how does this thing learn such a powerful attack at level one? But I guess it's because you need to eat a berry to actually use the move. So maybe uh, Violet will sit on the bench until it evolves. But we've also got Cardi in here. The sassiest, most rambunctious rapper in the game. I don't know how to say this Pokemon's actual name, so it's Cardi now, okay? And I actually gave her a couple of EXP candies to catch her up a little bit to the rest of the team. A pure psychic type Pokemon with disarming voice and Psybeam, who will be helping us out in the upcoming gym, which is of course going to be a fighting type gym. So I think Cardi will come in pretty helpful there. But we're finally back to take on Route 6 itself since we pretty much got stopped as soon as we got in here, and already we've got a battle! My super cute Pokemon is interested in your Pokemon. Alright, let's see how they stack up. Beauty Anita. Oh, so this is the Beauty Trainer class. They're looking a little different here in Sword and Shield. Uh, usually it's like... Well, I don't know how to put this, but... <laughs> a white chick with like a Gucci bag, but this time around she looks a little more... I want to say Hispanic, I don't know, I kind of like dig her style right now, but she's got a Clefairy to start off with, uh, so we probably could have gone for Violet to Toxel. Well, then again, we can't really use that Belch attack without putting a Berry on it, so I'm not sure what it could have done to take it out. Uh, the Flame Wheel for Salsa, or from Salsa, is more than enough though, and we're actually going to get a level up and learn Slam here. Um, I did update some of my other Pokemon's moves as well at the Move Relearner which for some reason I'd never actually gone to in the Pokemon Center, but a lot of my Pokemon actually learn new moves, including Charlie, who you can see here has Razor Shell and Crunch now, upgraded from Water Gun and Bite. Uh, so I can't believe I actually didn't go and check out that movie learner earlier, because Charlie's going to be a lot more powerful now with the Razor Shell in hand, or I guess in Claw, 
Let's see how much that does. Eh, not too bad. Hopefully this metronome uh, gives us some luck though. Not a big fan of metronome because if it happens to pull out a grass move, we are in a little bit of trouble. Uh, if you don't know, metronome always pulls a random move, like from every single move in the game, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, if it gets some type of grass move, we're probably gonna be in some trouble, but come on, Charlie, I believe in you. AKA, I believe in the luck of this Clefable as it gets Lava Plume now, okay. <laughs> I love, but I also kind of hate uh, Metronome because, yeah, it's basically a mini heart attack every turn, just hoping that you don't get something super effective. Like, that Lava Plume would have destroyed uh, Thwacky here, so let's hope that Mojo's got some good luck on it as it gets Spell Stinger. That's actually a bug move, so this might hurt, but not too bad, actually. That was a cool animation on it, though. Um... Charlie did get burned though, so our Razor Shell and Rock Tomb are not going to be doing as much damage. So let's just bring out Charlie and finish off Clefable here for the first battle. Or well, I guess technically second battle in Route 6, since we did battle those Team Yell Grunts. Your Pokemon are way too strong. You'll be safe no matter where you go. Stay beautiful, Anita. I don't even mean that like a weird creepy compliment. I mean, she's literally a beauty trainer class, okay guys? I understand they are 3D models. Pixel graphics, you know, I know I know she's not real as much as I wish she was Anyway, we got three ultra balls there. I was actually just complaining about how we haven't received any like good pokeballs yet or potions either The Pokemart still just sells super potions like we need some better stock than that uh, But Maractus get out of here because I want to focus on this Pokemon here Which may look like a regular Yamask, but if we actually encounter it, you will see that Instead of the usual little mask that Yamask carries around, it's now got a little rock glyph thing on its tail. And I actually want to catch this thing, so maybe I should go for Bug Bite. Um, I think the intense sunlight is going on here, like the weather effect. So if we went for Flame Wheel, it probably would have destroyed it in one hit. So I'm glad I switched it up last minute and went for the Bug Bite. Uh, but it doesn't even do that much damage. Going for the mean look there, which means Salsa cannot escape anymore. But am I trapped with you, Yamask, or are you trapped here with me? Let's find out. We could have gone for a quick ball too. I think I stocked up on those. And like I said, I do want to catch this thing, which keeps switching around our abilities. Is that literally like Mummy? It's called something different, but it basically does the same thing as Mummy, uh, which is Yamask and Cocfagrigus' original ability. It basically just replaces your ability with Mummy when you hit it. Uh, but this one, I guess, switches around his ability. It doesn't just, like, infect you with Mummy. But we go for the Premier Ball, and we catch it. I'm not sure why I went for the Premier Ball, but hey, it worked out. And it is my favorite type of Pokeball. Aside from Quick Balls, that is. They're just too dang good. But you mask the Spirit Pokemon. As you can see in the Galar region, it is a Ground and Ghost type, as opposed to just Ghost type. And a clay slab with cursed engravings took possession of a Yamask. The slab is said to be absorbing the Yamask's dark power. What? Does that mean the little stone thing at the bottom there is what's in control of it? I mean, it looks like it's weighing it down right now, so I guess that kind of makes sense. But I don't really remember Yamask's original story. I know that the mask that it carries around, I think, was actually from a human at one point. So... Yamask is kind of like an actual human ghost Pokemon or something like that. I might have to read back up on its Pokedex description or show it on screen or something. But apparently here in the Gala region, uh, the little rune on its tail there is in control instead of the actual ghost, which explains why it's now a ground type too. But let's do a bit of fishing and finally we're going to reel in something. Of course, after all that time we spent uh, waiting to reel in our rod. Of course, it was just a Magikarp, but uh, we're gonna go back down the stairs then, since there really wasn't much else there. And this time, we're gonna run into a Durant. Okay, I don't know if that was in the overworld or in the shaking patch of grass, but for some reason, I feel compelled to catch this Durant. And because I actually did stock up on Quick Balls, we can start going for those. Quick Balls work, I think, five times as effectively as Pokeballs on the first turn of a battle, which means they're really good if you just toss them out right from the start of the battle. 
I think its effectiveness was just proven right there as it catches the Durant on the first try. And that'll go into the decks. Does that mean Heatmore is somewhere around here? Because usually Durant and Heatmore are like prey and predator type of thing. And it says there that apparently Durant can somehow fight against Heatmore with its mandibles, but battle's important to better understand Pokemon. Time for a checkup! I don't know if they're actually a couple, but I meant like a duo of some kind. The medical team! Ivan and Evelyn? Or is it Iwan? It's a W, but for some reason I feel like it should still be pronounced Ivan? Iwin? I don't know, man. These names are confusing. <laughs> Just like the Pokemon names in Sword and Shield, which is why I go for such great nicknames like Salsa and Violet. Uh, but speaking of Violet, I'm not sure that it's going to be able to do too much against these Pokemon here. I really wish we could just use Belch on the Togetic there, but without a berry, I don't think our little Toxel can do much. So let's just go for a Flame Wheel in Salsa here and, yep, take out the Ponyard. Thanks to the power of the sun right now, our fire attacks are going to be powered up, so... Those are doing some devastating damage, hitting that level 32 right there. And now ancient power's coming out. Of course they were going to target my little baby. My little Violet! Thankfully we got her out of there. And now I'm not really sure what to do. I mean, I guess we could just keep flame wheeling. Uh, but I don't know why I brought out Artorias, actually, because... Togetic is a... Flying and Fairy type. Which means first impression is going to do nothing, even though that's like a 120 power attack. Uh, but the flame wheel will do some damage. And now Artorias, you just got to tank up the fairy wind, my dude. I don't know why I brought you out here. I guess I just didn't really think too much about it. Uh, tis fine though. Uh, it's at no HP, so even a knockoff will finish it off. Since Artorias has all moves that are not very effective against Togetic, but goes down in the end. And uh, Violet gets the level 30, which means it will be evolving, if I remember correctly. Ah, I just get so, so concerned when I see injured Pokemon. What is real strength? I'm very curious. So are y'all going to heal up my Pokemon or what? Oh, wait, baby don't need no healing because Violet is going to be evolving. And also because it took no damage in that battle. But more importantly, we have got ourselves the big, bad, blue Toxtricity. Kind of a hard name to say as well. I keep wanting to say Toxitricity, but it's just Toxtricity. Doesn't roll off the tongue very well, but obviously comes from Toxic and Electricity because those are exactly its typings there. Capable of generating 15,000 volts of electricity, this Pokemon looks down on all that would challenge it. And as you can see there, it says the low key form. This evolution has two different forms, the other being its amped up form, which I will show alongside it right now. And even though I kind of wanted to use the yellow one, I think this name is actually way more fitting for the low key form. Violet, I mean, because, well, it's looking pretty violet right now. And also learning the move Spark, uh, which I guess is not the best for it since we have a special attacking nature on it. I guess I'll get rid of Belch since we can't really make use of it right now. If there was some way to keep a berry on it permanently, that would be really powerful, but I guess you'd need an ability like um, whatever Trevenant has where it keeps gathering berries. Am I seeing things right? Uh, why is time frozen yet again? <laughs> I can't help but make the meme, but like seriously. I don't mean to rip on these games too hard, but how could they let that slide? Like, I kind of understand when you talk to an NPC and things freeze, like right now, you know? They don't want the Pokemon to move too out of position, but on the ladder, really? All right, I'm not gonna try to think too much about it. Let's just take on Backpacker Diane, giving us the thumbs up there and sending out the Sock, who I kind of forgot was in the game again, but it did chase us down earlier or a couple of episodes ago. And it's actually faster than us, too. Okay. Hit that low sweep, my dude. Think Salsa can take it. And with the sunlight still harsh up, up in the sky, our Flame Wheel will do a lot more damage than he was expecting. You know what? I'm going to disrespect you with the Bug Bite to take you out. I know it's not going to be very effective, but I feel like it will still do a good amount. As he goes for the low kick, but this is it. Bug Bite! And that's it, Mr. Sock. I don't know, it's kind of weird to see him 
because there's apparently also Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan in these games, and I'm pretty sure they must be version exclusives, right? Throw in Sock, I mean, I don't know about the rest. Muy dramático! Fantástico! What the heck, she speaks Spanish? Are you bilingual or what, Diane? Cuz, shouldn't your name be Diana? The gym challenge sure looks tough. You can't get ahead if you don't win. I think we'll just continue our carefree journey. You do that. I should probably do the same and not care so much about what your name actually is because I feel like it should be Diana instead of Diane if she is Hispanic. I don't know if she actually is. Like, she spoke Spanish. Doesn't mean she is Hispanic. Anyway, we got a heat more out here. The natural predator of Durant or Prey? Because apparently Durant can put up a fight against it, but I'm not sure how a bug and steel ant even takes a light tap from a fire type, but not gonna work out as easily as it did for the ant counterpart. And now I don't even know if I should actually fight this thing. Uh, I don't really care that much about catching it, you know, so I'm just gonna run away, but yeah. Um, I guess what I was saying is if her name was in Spanish, it would be Diana, but if it's spelled Diane, then it would be Diane, which just doesn't really make sense. At least in Spanish, it's not a name I've ever heard. I don't know, maybe I'm thinking too much about it. Let's just take on this model here with her leopard print jacket. And hopefully she's got a leopard herself. Or not, it's actually gonna be Skorupi. Which is not so easy for Salsa to deal with. I don't know why I thought because of her jacket there, she might have a uh, leopard, but... Actually, I always forget that Skarupi's a bug type. Maybe because Drapion is dark and poison type, I'm pretty sure. So I always assume that Skarupi's the same, but it is a little bug, which means we're going to be able to hit that super effective flame wheel. And next up, we got a Barsharp or Ponyard coming out. Not Bisharp, that's the evolution. Or B-Sharp, I still don't know. I think it might be B-Sharp because it's based on a chess piece, I'm pretty sure, the Bishop. And then Ponyard is the pawn in chess, right? So it would be, you know, Bishop, Bisharp. But if you went with regular English rules, it'd be Bisharp. I don't know, man. Apparently, regular English doesn't apply because this chick's name is Nicola instead of Nicole. And even if she loses who she is, the charm of Pokemon will never fade. I feel you there, Nicola. I feel like you and Diane should switch names, though. Or like the last letter in your names. Because her name is supposed to have an E at the end, like the traditional way, Nicole. But instead she was Nicola, and the other girl was Diane instead of Diana. I'm overthinking this way too much right now. Um, What I should be focused on is what she said, which is, No matter what happens, I will always love Pokemon, each and every one of them, including this Duskull. Which is why I'm totally running away from it, uh, since there's actually another trainer over here. And I wonder if I should switch up... Maybe Artorias to first. Or even Cardi so that she can gain more experience. Uh, no, I am not filling the curry decks right now. I think we've only made like a total of three curry so far. But this girl here is about to have a throw. Or does have it. About to have... You know what I'm trying to say. I don't know if Cardi can take it on though. Uh, do we risk it? Can Cardi take a hit? Thanks for being here. Thank you. Um... <laughs> I don't know if it's worth it, man, but I'm gonna try it. And at least we're faster, so side beam away, and it's not even gonna do half his health, so that is not good at all. As the storm throw is coming through, and that's not gonna do half our health either. Okay, that's not bad. Critical hit too, so that means the next one will do even less damage. Okay, maybe Cardi actually can handle herself in battle. Might have underestimated this little hat thingy. Or not, because this time it uses revenge, and Cardi's gonna go down. So In her very first battle, how could I do you like that, Cardi? I'm sorry. I just, I wanted you to get more experience, but I guess this does give us a chance to try out our other new Pokemon, though, in Violet here. And with a swift sparkin, we're gonna take down the throw. That was a sick animation, though, the way that Violet just kind of threw herself at the throw like that. And Mojo's gonna gain level 24, or 34 actually, uh, which means that it is very close to evolving now. I think I remember reading that it actually evolves at level 35, 
instead of 36 like the usual starter Pokemon. So we're definitely getting close right now. But it's time to shake it up and pay attention to how fast the berry tree is shaking because uh, I believe when the tree starts shaking faster, it means that a Pokemon's coming out. And I guess it doesn't matter because here's Greedent. Maybe I wasn't paying attention to how fast it was shaking because I thought a Pokemon still wasn't going to pop out. But actually, this is a good chance to just use a Quick Ball on it. We kind of failed to catch a Greedent back in the wild area. But this is our second shot at Chipmunk Love here. And this time, Greedent will be caught. Probably one of the weirdest looking Pokemon of the Gala region. I'm not going to lie. I, I'm not a huge fan of this design. <laughs> I don't know, it just looks like a Pachirisu that ate too much. Like a Galarian Pachirisu, you know, or like a shiny version, but... Wait a minute, why does it have little berries under its tail in the little sprite? Oh, it literally says it here. Stashes berries in its tail. So many berries that they fall out constantly. But this Pokemon is a bit slow-witted, so it doesn't notice the loss. <laughs> Poor Greedence. Not the biggest fan of this Pokemon. I know he's a big fan of those berries, though, but... Hey, at least we get some still. Actually, we got a good amount. It said something about the citrus berries, though. Maybe Greedent ate them all. I think we just gotta assume from now on that uh, the Pokemon that was stealing our berries in every single route was just Greedent. There's gotta be a Greedent in every single tree of Galar, and we just couldn't encounter them until now. But we did encounter a new TM for Steelwing there, which reminds me, where the heck is Robin right now? How did I only just notice that? Alright, well it looks like I can't have Cardi leading the party. It's just a freaking waste, so... Guess we don't want to party with Cardi. Great! Uh, get out my way, Helioptile. I got more items to grab over here, but... What was I just talking about? Oh yeah, Robin! Is totally gone from the party! But, that's fine. Uh, he'll definitely be back for the fighting gym. As you got some trainer tips, you can use a TM as many times as you'd like. Teacher Pokemon moves of various types. Okay, it's actually just reminding us of Robin more because that is definitely a Pokemon that we could teach Steelwing. That is, if he was on the team right now, but I seem to have totally forgotten about him. Like, I was just so excited to get some new Pokemon on the party that I totally forgot about our Corvus Squire. But yeah, he'll be back for the gym battle. Don't you worry one bit. Um, there's actually an area that I completely skipped over back here, I guess. You can see a tent over there, and there's also a Pokemon in this area that for some reason we are just not running into. It's a Pokemon we've technically seen before. Maybe that's the only hint I'm going to give because, I don't know, I don't want to spoil it until we actually find it. Since I guess it's not appearing, but it'll be pretty obvious once we do see it. Anyway, I'm majorly distracted by the giant Diglett statue back there, but... How appropriate that we get the TM for Dig right in front of them. And that definitely reminds me of... Was it Coney Coney City? Oh, um... This girl wants us to make some curry with her. Okay, I'm down. I actually just had some curry yesterday. Pokemon finally made me cave in and order some. And honestly, I want more. Are, are you guys good? Oh my gosh, hit my top. Chill, dude. Oh. Okay, we'll just walk away like that, Machoke. Why don't you... I came here to cook some curry up, okay? That's what the lady said, so that's what we're gonna do. However, I don't know what ingredients to actually throw in it. Let's hope that Cam here puts in some greasy food into the pot because I'm throwing in my Chesto berries, all right? Oh, wait, was that not even my berries? Now I don't even know because apparently there's four people in this. What the heck? This is the first time we're gonna be cooking out with four people at once, so let's go for it. And I also didn't know that you could actually look around while you're doing the little cooking mini game. But look at that. There's a little Tyrogue, a Hitmontop in the back there. All right. Do we got to fan this faster? Faster, faster. Come on, everybody. Oh, gosh. Okay. The flames are getting a little too hot. Uh, <laughs> Tyrogue is a little concerned. But now it's time to spin. Faster, everybody. Come on. Put some muscle into it. Wow. They are spinning it really slow, actually. Maybe they know the strategy. Maybe I'm the one doing it wrong. But I still haven't figured it out. Like, how to cook the best kind of curry. Maybe I gotta look up some kind of guide or something. But finally, we gotta put our heart into it. And whoa! No way! We actually did it! The giant heart! Yes! Does that mean we're gonna get the eruption going? The explosion of flavor? Yes! 
We finally made the perfect curry. And the best part is, I don't even know how we did it, guys. But the dry fried food curry. Let's see if Violet enjoys it. Look at that delicious air. <gasps> yes! Strum that chest. Okay, that sounds kind of weird. But not as weird as the fact that it was literally eating the air there for a second. But nice, we got Milsery class. That's not even the best possible, is it? Alright, that's enough Pokemon camping right now. I'm done with you, Cam. And I'm done with your camp. But, of course, we get a little bit of experience for that. Uh, wait, did Cardi not gain experience because she was fainted? Oh, wait, I forgot. It heals up our Pokemon. Duh. Okay, well, anyway, what are you up to, lady? What is that contraption? Name's Caraliss. I'm uh, researching fossils, huh? Fossils in Galar are broken into top halves and bottom halves for some reason, huh? Strangely, no matter which top and bottom you combine, they can be restored together. Perhaps within this mystery lies the key to understanding these combinable Pokemon, huh? Oh, is that why she's wearing two different colored shoes? I thought she was just had a terrible fashion sense, but... Uh, we did actually find some fossils in the previous episode back in the wild area. Or it may have been two episodes ago uh, when we explored the wild area fully and we got some fossilized dinos. And speaking of, here's two more fossilized dinos actually. So now we've got three of those, uh, which means we actually can't combine them at all. But yeah, there's a special little gimmick to the fossil Pokemon of this region, and that is Fusion. I would love to explain it some more, but of course, little Helioptile's gotta get in our way. Uh, but we don't actually have two different halves of a fossil Pokemon yet, so I guess we can't do the Fusion. But we can run into Silicobra at last! I've been hoping to run into this Pokemon the entire episode since we did actually encounter one at the very start uh, with Team Yell. And yeah, you can actually find it here on Route 6. So let's go for our Quick Ball and hopefully work some magic. As we do, Silicobra has been caught. Quick Balls are OP, man. You always got to make sure to keep some Quick Balls on deck. Just toss it on the first turn. If you fail, you know, then just try to catch the Pokemon like normal. But this is going to be the Sand Snake Pokemon. Ooh, wasn't that like some Game of Thrones characters, the Sand Snakes? You want a good girl. But you need the best snake. As it digs, it swallows sand and stores it in its neck pouch. The pouch can hold more than 17 pounds of sand. That's a lot of sand. Could use this thing as like a weight. Could use it like a sledgehammer. I guess that's not really that heavy to be like a sledgehammer, but uh, wait a minute. Not this ladder. I can stop time, but only for four seconds. Or as long as I'm on the ladder. Imagine that being your stand power, like you can only freeze time, but on ladders. I guess it was up here after all, like where we're supposed to go to get out of this place and finally make it to Stow on side, hopefully, but I should actually heal up Hatina one more time because it looks like there's one final trainer and I need all that juicy experience. So Cardi, we're going to revive you one more time, just like your music career. Pokemon is art too, if we both give it our all. Oh, is this actually like a sculptor or something? Oh my, or is it the Joker? Jeez, this man, Artist Duncan, calm down. Look at the way he throws his Pokeball too. What an absolute madman. But he is going to have a coughing. And I wonder if maybe Cardi can handle this. I wish we'd healed up to full HP because if I wasn't at half right now, I would be way more willing to risk it. But looks like the risk is going to pay off as the Psybeam takes it down in one hit. Thank you, thank you, Cardi. Finally coming through right there. Uh, let's just pretend all those couple of battles at the beginning didn't happen, huh? But looks like Sudowoodo is up next for the Joker here. <laughs> is it just me or does the guy look like the Joker? I'm talking about in the new movie, of course. Uh, well, it's called the Joker. Or is it just Joker, actually? I don't remember anymore, but... What the heck is that sculpture he's holding anyway? Is that supposed to be a Pikachu or a Pseudo Wudo of some kind? Maybe a Pseudo Pikachu? Cause it does not look like a regular Pikachu to me. Then again, it could be abstract art or like his rendition of it. You know, art is subjective as they say. I went to art school and I don't even remember what that means, but it's definitely not what I meant to say. Uh, I was gonna say, 
everyone's art style is different? I don't know, I feel like there's a saying that goes something like that, but uh, Cardi's actually gonna be learning Dazzling Gleam, which is way stronger than Disarming Voice, so now we've got ourselves a very powerful Fairy-type move as well to help us against that fighting gym, but your moves were beautiful! Oh my, I'm completely fascinated by them! Seems a little shocked more than fascinated, but... Oh jeez, look at him! What the heck, dude? His hand is like shaking! Look at his face too! Okay, that is definitely the Joker right there. What is wrong with this guy? The greatest art is drawn from Pokemon and their trainer in a battle! Is that supposed to be like a drawing pun joke there? But he's a sculptor, he doesn't even draw. Although I guess sculptors do draw like a sketch of their sculpture before they draw it, but... Why was there a loading right there? That was weird. I thought there was about to be a cutscene. Welcome to the town of Stoanside, a vibrant town that has grown up around an ancient mural tucked away in the mountains. And I can't wait to explore those murals in the next episode because that is going to do it for today. But actually, I just remembered there's something in this Pokemon Center that I want to check out. My Pokemon are the ones that train. I just rest the pot. That's all. Okay. Training on the mountain. What a stoic black belt you are. <laughs> So he's not actually even a black belt, he just is playing dress up for his Pokemon. Hey, I have tons of good stuff, I'll share some with ya. Ooh, could this be it? Yes indeed, we got two fossilized birds. The fossil of an ancient Pokemon that once soared through the sky. What it looked like is a mystery. But not for long, because the professor on Route 6 will restore fossils for ya. If you want to collect different fossils, go to the wild area, search for them by yourself, or ask the digging duo. And yes, you can definitely do that, uh, but you can also trade with Pokemon Shield if you got a friend with the opposite version. Or you're, you know, a lonely guy like me and has both copies. Uh, and I'm struggling to catch up on Shield right now because the next gym is actually different depending on which version you're playing. And I want to show off ver both versions for you guys. Uh, but in Pokemon Shield version, that guy will actually give you a completely different fossil. As well as the one you find on the ground here in Route 6 will be different. And I'll have to double check, but I'm pretty sure you can give your Pokemon a fossil to hold and then trade it to the other game. Uh, because even though they're not exactly version exclusives, like you can still find the other fossils in the wild area like that guy said. But um, if you want to find it more easily, you have to trade between versions to get all the different top and bottom halves. But anyway, here is Keralis which I've just realized is a pun for careless because we're being careless right now, playing God, merging the DNA of these ancient Pokemon. Which of these fossils do you think can stand up to the high standards of Keralis? Uh, well, we've only got one choice, so... Which of these do you think will pique the curiosity of Keralis? <laughs> Alright, I'm done with you, Keralis. Let's just fuse together the fossilized bird and the fossilized dino and see what happens. Fossil restoration time! Let's unravel this mystery! Alright, I'll stick them together. Here we go! Objective complete! It seems the restoration was a great success. Yes, I can see it in its eyes. This is a Pokémon that walked the face of Galar in ancient times. Please take care of this Pokémon, huh? And we're gonna get ourselves the Arctozolt. Whatever that means. Oh my gosh! <laughs> What have we done? This thing looks like it's in so much pain right now. The shaking of its freezing upper half is what generates its electricity. It has a hard time walking around. What the heck, dude? We're out here like Shao Tucker in Full Metal Alchemist, fusing together different animals and creating some type of fishy pterodactyl abomination. But it is an electric ice type, which is pretty sick. No pun intended, because it does have a little snot coming out of it there, but I feel bad even giving you a nickname, because then I'm really going to feel like Shao Tucker, you know, calling his animal Nina, I mean his daughter, uh... Big Brother Egg. <laughs> Let's not talk about this anymore, I'm, I'm getting uncomfortable, so in the next episode, we will head into Stow on Side and hopefully take on the gym there. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed. And before our character dies of heat stroke, I will see you in the next one.